Hello everyone, welcome to Anime Know Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Today we're going to talk about how the Navy has been fearing Luffy's actions for quite a long time. Now, Luffy's power has grown throughout the story as a pirate, and currently he has the highest bounty among the new generation of pirates, also known as the Supernova. In fact, he is the pirate with the highest bounty after all the Yonkos. Now, as Luffy progresses on his journey, he gets closer and closer to truly becoming King of the Pirates. And this is something that the Marines and the world government have been concerned about for quite some time. Ever since discovering Luffy's origin, learning that Dragon was his father and Garp his grandfather, this made the world government want to watch Luffy's actions even more. Now, usually the world government offers the title of Warlord of the Sea to dangerous and powerful pirates, offering them free reign if they obey the laws of the Navy and follow orders given to them, but the Straw Hats have never received this invitation. In short, the world government has always feared Luffy. In today's video, we're going to talk about the reasons why the world government fears Luffy how Luffy quickly became a target for the Marines, and how this attention can be dangerous for Luffy in the future. If you're new to the channel, we really appreciate your help by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot and motivates us to make new videos. But for now, let's get into the video. So to begin, the Warlords of the Sea are pirates allied with the world government. In exchange for their services to the world government, they receive certain advantages. This would, as I mentioned, allow them to sail across the sea without being targeted by the Navy, admirals, or even bounty hunters. So they they could go from one place to another without being interrupted, making their actions easier. In addition, they become even more feared. After all, when becoming warlords of the sea, many pirates recognize them as powerful groups, as there are only a few who have ever managed to obtain this post, so those that hold this title are always incredibly strong. Now, many pirates might wish to become a warlord of the sea, not only for the fame they would gain, but mainly for the advantages that warlords of the sea have, like the possibility of earning money by doing business facilitated by the Navy. However, the greatest benefit comes from the fact that Marines will no longer observe their actions. Thus, they are able to perform evil deeds in a way that the world government will never discover. So for a long time, this title was desired by other pirates, but only those who had great fame could ever attain this title. Luffy and the Straw Hats would have been a great choice to become Warlords of the Sea, as they've all earned high bounties, have gained fame during their journey, being the ones who defeated several other warlords, including Crocodile and Gekko Moria. When Luffy defeated defeated Crocodile, he became much better known. But when he defeated Moria, the Navy decided to hide what Luffy had done so he wouldn't become someone considered stronger than the other warlords of the sea. But with these achievements, Luffy could have actually become a warlord and gained these advantages. However, this offer was really never made to him, even with some warlords having much less notoriety than Luffy. Unfortunately, Luffy also destroyed any chance of ever being asked to be a warlord the moment he declared himself an enemy of the world government when rescuing Robin. So Teach became a warlord after handing Ace over to the Navy, even though he really was still a member of Whitebeard's crew, had turned over a former commander and honestly wasn't really as well known as Luffy in the world. After all, the fame Blackbeard achieved was not really that great when compared to the achievements of other warlords. Beside that, he really didn't even have a bounty, being the first pirate to become a warlord without ever having had a bounty. So many other warlords have been recognized worldwide when achieving the title of warlord, such as Law, for instance, who had given hundreds of pirate hearts to the Navy just so he could earn the title of Warlord. So it is possible that Luffy may have been able to become a Warlord because of his growing fame that roamed all over the sea, but the world government didn't invite him and didn't even think about the possibility of him becoming a Warlord. This is all because, deep down, they truly feared Luffy. Now even though Luffy was a budding pirate, there was still a lot that made the leaders of the world government fear what he could do. First, starting for the fact that he was a D, a surname that has always been considered to be an enemy of the Celestial dragons. Now, we don't exactly know why, but we do know that everyone who has the initial D is feared by the world government. Even legends are created because of that surname, and in the end, this fact alone could have made Luffy a possible enemy. So, Teach was allowed to become a warlord, and Garp was allowed to join the navy, as they both showed interest in joining the navy and supporting the world government. So, they still allowed it, even though they were both Ds. But unlike Luffy, kind of proved to be an enemy from the start. In addition, we know that Luffy has the famous straw hat that once belonged to the King of the Pirates, given to him by the Yonko Shanks. After some time, we found out that the leader of the world government, Imsama, the leader of the world nobles, had a gigantic frozen straw hat, and many believe that this hat may have belonged to Joy Boy. In any case, the straw hat may have also been one of the reasons why Luffy was never invited to become a warlord of the sea. In addition, we know that Luffy's family could also contribute to the world government's fear of him, as his grandfather Garp is an incredibly strong member of the navy, being at the level of an admiral. Once it was discovered that his father was Dragon, the person 
person considered the biggest threat to the world government and leader of the revolutionaries, Luffy had no chance. So even though Luffy's relatives were important people, it makes him a possible threat in the future, since his future could hold similar greatness. As shown today, Luffy has earned a high bounty after facing several powerful pirates, even daring to face a Yonko, the most powerful and feared pirates, even by the Navy. As we've learned in recent chapters, the world government is led secretly by Imsama, a character who gives orders to the Five Elder Stars, so it could be possible that Imsama himself is the one who chooses who would become a warlord, as they are the ones that lead everything within the world government. In chapters in which Imsama appears, they are shown to have a very keen interest in Luffy, an interest in which it seems that Imsama wants to keep Luffy away from spoiling their plans if they were ever discovered. So perhaps Imsama chose to keep Luffy away from the world government so that he could keep everything under his own control. This could also be one of the reasons why Imsama does not want to allow Luffy to grow as a pirate and still fears him and doesn't really attack him directly. With all that, inviting Luffy to become a warlord really wouldn't be a good choice as it could interfere with any future plans Imsama has. After all, Luffy does meet the requirements to become a warlord before this organization was ever shut down by the world government. Just considering the warlords prior to the disbanding, each warlord was known to possess great strength, being a frontline in case a Yonko ever tries to cause problems in the world. And it's even said that together, all the warlords would be capable of defeating a Yonko. Let's just consider these former members and their accolades. First, we have Dracul Mihawk, the best swordsman in the world and former rival of Shanks, who is currently a Yonko. Mihawk, with his incredible sword, is an incredible asset. We have Bartholomew Kuma, a former member of the Revolutionary Army, who always possessed a kind heart, helping his comrades in times of need, and has a devil fruit with incredibly powerful teleportation powers. Then there's Boa Hancock, the queen of the Kujas, a woman capable of making any man fall in love with her without even using any power, and she takes advantage of this to activate her devil fruit powers. Next, there's Buggy, who became a warlord after everyone learned that he had once belonged to Roger's crew when he was younger during the Battle of Marineford. In addition, he's also assembled in a magnificently huge crew, which contribute to his fame. We also have Edward Weeble, who, although it much isn't known, is claimed to be Whitebeard's son and is incredibly powerful in his own right. After Weevil, we also have Doflamingo, who, before being defeated by Luffy and being captured by the Marines, was a pirate who worked for Kaido and was incredibly powerful and the assumed ruler of Dressrosa. Next, we have Law, who was able to become a warlord after delivering hundreds of pirate hearts to the Navy, but lost his rank after allying with Luffy. But his Opio no Mi powers allow Law to become one of the most powerful pirates in the worst generation. Next, we had Gekko Moria, who, although being defeated by Kaido and having his crew destroyed, still was so powerful he was invited to become a warlord by the world government. Blackbeard was invited to join the warlords after defeating Ace and delivering him to the Marines, but his real motivation wasn't to possess the title, but to obtain the title of Yonko, though this plan was able to attract Whitebeard to Marineford. Jinbei became a warlord to protect the Fishmen, and he never wanted to work for the Navy, and during the Battle of Marineford, he didn't want to fight Luffy or Whitebeard, but that's why he was considered an enemy. And finally, we have Croc Crocodile, an incredibly powerful pirate who became a warlord in an attempt to control the entire kingdom of Alabasta. After the world government decided to disband the warlords of the sea, they became enemies once again and lost all the benefits the world government had once given them. But before the warlords ceased to exist, Luffy possessed all the qualities to be able to join the group. But as stated earlier, the world government was always afraid of Luffy. This may indicate that Imsama knows more about Luffy and his future than Luffy does himself. But for now, I want to know your opinion. Why do you think Luffy wasn't invited to become warlord. Could Imsama have feared Luffy from the beginning of his journey? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. We also want to thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. Comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, if you made it this far, give us a like as you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in the next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.